in this module, we are going to learn foreign trade multiplier and its repercussions. The equilibrium level in any economy is defined by the equation y is equal to c plus i plus g plus x minus m. But there might be autonomous changes in any of these parameters which creates disequilibrium. In response to this disequilibrium, the automatic adjustment mechanism works through the multiplier technique to bring induced changes in the level of national income. The multiplier technique is an application of Keynes in which output changes by a multiplier of change in autonomous parameter. It is the most effective technique in dealing with changes in planned investment or changes in exports upon national income. In this chapter, we will begin with the study of adjustment to equilibrium in a closed economy. We will then extend the concept to equilibrium in a small open economy. The concept is then further extended to include foreign repercussions which arise when nations are not small. When nations are not small, there is a feedback effect which creates repercussions on the first nation. After starting this module, you shall be able to know the difference between closed economy multiplier and open economy multiplier with and without foreign repercussions. Learn the working of foreign trade multiplier, identify the global repercussions of foreign multiplier, evaluate the impact of autonomous changes in export and import on national income, analyze in detail the automatic adjustment mechanism. Let us discuss adjustment to equilibrium in closed economy, equilibrium output in closed economy. The equilibrium in an economy is defined at the point at which planned aggregate expenditure is equal to aggregate output. To keep the analysis simple, we will not include the role of government sector into the model. Planned expenditure is the total expenditure by households on consumption plus the desired investment expenditure by firms that is y is equal to c plus i. On the other hand, Planned aggregate output is either consumed or saved and this remains true even if we are out of equilibrium that is y is equal to c plus s. If an equilibrium planned expenditure is equal to planned output, the equilibrium condition can be restated as c plus i is equal to c plus s, which finally gives us i is equal to s. Hence, the equilibrium level of income is determined at the level at which planned savings is equal to planned investment. This also defines the level at which leakages out of the economy in the form of savings is exactly equal to injections in the form of investment. The equilibrium in a closed economy can be seen graphically. In the first panel, 45 degree line serves as the reference line where output and expenditure are equal. On that, we have imposed planned expenditure line y is equal to c plus i. The point at which the two lines intersect represents the equilibrium level of income E. In the second panel, savings and investment levels of the economy are represented and the equilibrium level E in the above panel is translated into the below panel at the point where s is equal to i. The diagram also helps us to understand the adjustment mechanism. Any deviation from the equilibrium level will create disequilibrium and hence calls for adjustment. If for any reason there is a change in planned investment, it will shift the equilibrium point. Let us consider the case where planned investment by all the firms in the economy rises. This will shift the planned expenditure line upwards in a parallel manner by the amount of new investment. The new line is C plus I dash which intersects the 45 degree line at E dash. This point can be seen in both the panels of the diagram. Due to an increase in investment, the equilibrium output in the economy rises. When output rises, people spend this increased output. The increased consumption, spending by consumers, signals firm to accumulate more inventories and make more investment. This generates more income which is spent further on goods. 
this cycle goes on till we reach the new equilibrium point at which spending is just equal to the output produced. The process does not go forever because every time income is increased, only a part of it is spent. A part of increased income is saved too, which acts as leakage until the equilibrium is restored. This process of a unit increase in investment creates multiple rounds of increase in income. I repeat, rounds of increase in income, which is known as the multiplier. Now, we will discuss multiplier in closed economy. An increase in investment leads us to the new equilibrium where savings equalize to the new level of investment. This additional savings created is equal to the additional investment in the equilibrium that is delta S is equal to delta I. Delta S is equal to MPS into delta Y, a fraction of income is saved. Delta Y is equal to delta S upon MPS. Also, delta Y is equal to delta I upon MPS since delta S is equal to delta I. Hence, multiplier K that is delta Y upon delta I is equal to 1 upon MPS which is equal to 1 upon 1 minus MPC. In the closed economy, multiplier is equal to the inverse of marginal propensity to save. Any autonomous change in economy changes the output by the multiplier times the autonomous change. Next, we will discuss adjustment to equilibrium in a small open economy. We will first consider the case of small open economy where the small economy is small enough to have any effect, feedback effect on the national level of income. The analysis will then be extended to include foreign repercussions. Let us discuss planned expenditure in small open economy. For analyzing planned expenditure in open economy, we should include the goods and services produced for the rest of the world, that is exports, and exclude those what we import from the rest of the world. Exports are included because they represent domestic production, whereas imports are excluded because they are not a part of domestic output produced. The equation thus becomes planned expenditure is equal to C plus I plus G plus X minus M where X minus M together represent net exports. Next, we will discuss import function. Imports are determined on the level of domestic national income. When income rises, imports also rises since people spend their increased income on various goods and services which also includes goods and services produced abroad. In this case, imports become a function of national income and hence can be written as a function of national income that is m is equal to small m into y where small m is the marginal propensity to import marginal propensity to import mpm is the change in imports caused by a unit change in income that is small m is equal to delta capital m upon delta y it is a positive number less than 1 so that a unit increase in income changes imports by less than 1 unit. We assume exports to be exogenous for time. Now we are going to discuss equilibrium output in an open economy. Equilibrium is defined at the level where planned expenditure is equal to the total output where y is equal to c plus i plus g plus x minus m. Retaining the assumption of no government role, the above equation can be restated as y minus c plus m is equal to i plus x. s plus m is equal to i plus x. This is the leakages is equal to injections condition under open economy equilibrium. Rearranging the above equation, we get s is equal to i plus x minus m. x minus m represents net exports or net foreign investment. Hence, total savings in the economy is equal to the domestic investment plus foreign investment. If the term is negative, it means there is net import which implies there is foreign disinvestment.
coming on to multiplier in small open economy or foreign trade multiplier with no repercussions. From the equilibrium condition we know S plus M is equal to I plus X. Hence the following will be true. Delta S plus Delta M is equal to Delta I plus Delta X. We know Delta S is equal to MPS into Delta Y and Delta M is equal to MPM into Delta Y. Substituting in the equation we get MPS into Delta Y plus MPM into Delta Y is equal to Delta I plus Delta X MPS plus MPM into Delta Y is equal to Delta I plus Delta X. Delta Y is equal to 1 into Delta I plus Delta X upon MPS plus MPM. Hence, foreign trade multiplier with no repercussion effects K dash that is Delta Y upon Delta I plus Delta X is equal to 1 upon MPS plus MPM is equal to 1 upon 1 minus MPC minus MPM. Next, we will discuss foreign repercussions or feedback effect. The previous analysis was one of simple trade multiplier based on the assumption of small open economy. But economies in international trade are linked to each other. A nation's exports or imports affect not only its domestic level of income but also other nations income level. We will analyze in detail the effect of any autonomous change on national income. We will study the effect of change in exports and change in investment and what repercussions it creates in case of open economy. We restrict the analysis to two nation world, nation one and nation two. Next we will discuss feedback effect from autonomous change in exports. Suppose nation one exports increases. This means nation two imports rises. This effect works through two channels. Channel one of feedback effect Nation 1 exports increases, its income increases and as income increases, nation's imports increases too. This increase in imports of nation 1 means nation 2's exports have risen, leading to an increase in nation 2's income which causes its imports to rise. As nation 2's imports rises, it means nation 1's exports rises, creating another round of increase in income and increase in imports. This process gets repeated between the two nations as described. Channel 2 of feedback effect. Initial increase in nation 1 exports leads to rise in imports of nation 2. This leads to reduced incomes and hence reduced imports of nation 2. As imports of nation 2 decreases, nation 1's exports decreases reducing its income and further imports. Decline in imports means corresponding decline in exports of nation 2 and decline in its income and imports. This process also gets repeated back and forth creating repercussions of an initial change in demand. It is seen that an initial increase in exports of nation 1 creates repercussion effects which feedbacks into itself. Channel 1 works at increasing income which is reduced by the negative feedback effect working through channel 2. The final effect is summarized in the following value of multiplier. K double dash is equal to delta Y1 upon delta X1 equal to 1 upon MPS1 plus MPM1 plus MPM2 plus MPS1 upon MPS2. MPS1 and MPS2 refer to marginal propensities to save of nation 1 and nation 2 respectively. Similarly, MPM1 and MPM2 are the values of marginal propensities to import of nation 1 and nation 2. This value of foreign trade multiplier includes repercussions effects which is reduced due to the negative feedback working reducing the total value of multiplier as compared to the simple foreign trade multiplier K dash. Let us discuss feedback effect from autonomous change in investment. Suppose nation 1's investment rises. An increase in investment leads to an increase in income which increases its imports. There is only one feedback working in this case. 
as imports of nation one rises, nation two's exports rises, increasing its income and its imports. An increase in imports of nation two implies increase in nation one's exports leading to its increase in income and exports again. This process continues to work expanding exports, income and imports in both nations. The final value of multiplier changes in this case to be k double dash is equal to delta y1 upon delta i2 equal to 1 plus mpm2 upon mps2 whole upon mps1 plus mpm1 plus mpm2 plus mps1 upon mps2. Here again mps1 and mps2 refer to marginal propensities to save of nation 1 and nation 2 and mpm1 and mpm2 are the values of marginal propensities to import of nation 1 and nation 2 respectively. Since there is a positive feedback working only in this case, the multiplier effect of initial increase in investment would be higher than in the case of simple trade multiplier and the feedback model of exports. Feedback model of exports had a contractionary effect simultaneously working to reduce the national incomes in nation 1 and nation 2. Now let us summarize what we have learned in this module. The automatic adjustment mechanism works through the multiplier technique to bring induced changes in the level of national income in case of disequilibrium. The equilibrium in an economy is defined at the point at which planned aggregate expenditure is equal to aggregate output. Planned expenditure is the total expenditure by households on consumption plus the desired investment expenditure by firms that is y is equal to c plus i. On the other hand, planned aggregate output is either consumed or saved and this remains true even if we are out of equilibrium that is y is equal to c plus s. In the closed economy, multiplier is equal to the inverse of marginal propensity to save. Any autonomous change in economy changes the output by the multiplier times the autonomous change. Planned expenditure equation in the open economy changes to c plus i plus g plus x minus m. Imports are determined on the level of domestic national income. When income rises, imports also rises. Foreign trade multiplier with no repercussions effects k dash that is delta y upon delta i plus delta x is equal to 1 upon mps plus mpm is equal to 1 upon 1 minus mpc minus mpm. In open economy, the nation feeds back onto itself and creates repercussions. Considering these repercussions effects, the value of multiplier changes. Feedback model of exports has both expansionary and contractionary effect leading to a reduction in the value of the multiplier to k double dash is equal to delta y1 upon delta x1 which is equal to 1 upon mps1 plus mpm1 plus mpm2 plus mps1 upon mps2. Feedback model of investment has only expansionary effect working which raises the value of multiplier higher than the simple trade multiplier to k double dash is equal to delta y1 upon delta i2 which is equal to 1 plus mpm2 upon mps2 whole upon mps1 plus mpm1 plus mpm2 plus mps1 upon mps2.